Okay, this was part two of the uh, test review for module 9A. Um, this is going to focus on the extension of power to a power rule that we did in 9A.2, um, but it's going to apply it to questions that involve multiplication and division. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at our first question here. Now, while we're doing this as well, I'm going to be having to write on my screen here so we can see exactly what we're doing. So the one with the exponent here, the exponent of six, this is the one that we're going to have to do power to the power rule on. So I got to write this as two to the power of six. I'm going to do X to the power of six. And I'm going to do Y to the power of five, all to the power of six. So that takes care of the first part of this question. But then after I've done that, I still have to multiply the answer by negative four X squared Y. So just like when I do my GEMDAS questions or PEMDAS questions, if you prefer, I'm getting rid of the parentheses first on these questions and I'm doing an exponent. So I'm working on all those things that we did before. Now, to work out what some of these things are, we can definitely use our Desmos calculator. So at the top there, there was a place where you could type in two to the power of six. Um, as I know two to the power of six, I'm just gonna go ahead and write that one down. It would be 64. Oops, let me make sure that looks more like a two in parentheses, not a 12. Um, x to the power of six, that is just x to the power of six. And y to the power of five to the power of six, this is where I multiply my exponents because I've got one inside the exponent and one out, that's uh, so one inside of parentheses and one outside of parentheses. So five times six is 30. But I still need to multiply by, I'm just gonna make that a little clearer so I don't think it's subtract. Uh, negative four x squared, oops, that was not very good. Negative four x squared y. Now, as we work on this, we're doing numbers first, letters second in alphabetical order. So I got 64 times negative four, which I can go ahead and I can use the decimals calculator for. I will tell you that that is negative 256. And notice by doing that, you can get rid of some of the answers that don't contain negative 256. Now, once I know my next term, I will actually know what the right answer is. So I won't even need to finish the whole question. So we have six and that's a two, very poorly drawn. Six add two is eight. So I actually know that the correct answer for this one, therefore, is going to be this answer here. If you check with the y's, y to the power of 30. This is y to the power of one, of course. So if there's no exponent, 30 add one is 31. And therefore, you can pick that answer there as well. Remember on yours, it might not be in exactly the same order as this. So make sure you pick the answer that says negative 256 X to the eight, Y to the power of 31. Let me clear all drawings and let me move on to the next question. Oops, looks like I have to stop between each one and then add it back in again. All right, so let me get my drawing tool again. All right, here we go. So this one says to the power of three, so, oh, sorry, times by three, it does say power of three as well. So everything inside the parentheses, I have to do to the power of three. So that means that I have to do my negative two, to the power of three. And I also have to do my y to the power of three as well. And I'm gonna divide all of that by 21, x to the four, oops, to the power of negative two. So on the bottom, the denominator you can see that the exponent outside the parentheses is negative two. So each of the terms inside the parentheses, I'm gonna to do to the power of negative two. And then I can actually do my power to a power rule here again. So uh, negative two times three is negative six. Y to the three, that's just Y to the three, divided by 21. Uh, four times negative two is negative eight. Remember, these are all calculations you can do on the Desmos calculator, and you should just make sure you don't make any careless mistakes. Negative two times negative two is positive four. And then now we can just go along the line and make sure we simplify everything correctly. So three over 21, if you type it into Desmos, it will give you a decimal. You can click the fraction to decimal button and it will say it's one seventh. So I can already start looking for, do I have answers that don't have a seven on the bottom? Um, let me get rid of one answer, but it's a good start. Now, as we're subtracting here, we've got to be careful that we don't just do negative six, take away eight. The line here, the division line tells you you are dividing. And the rule for division with exponents is subtract. So it's negative six, 
take away negative 8. And if you do that, you end up with positive 2. And at this stage, I know exactly which the correct answer is. Um, this one does not have an x to the 2 on the top. Neither does this, meaning that it must be this answer here. If you do one last check, 3 take away 4 is negative 1. And negative exponents, we switch their position and we make them positive. Um, if it's y to the power of 1, you can, of course, just put y and you will notice that is the same answer that you can see here. All right, let's scroll on to question three. Oops, I forgot to clear all my drawings. I will go ahead and do that now. There we go. Uh, this one, with this being a fraction with the parentheses going around the whole thing, all these terms are to the power of two. So what I can do is before I do each term to the power of two, which you can absolutely do if you wish, it's easier if we actually simplify this fraction first before we actually start. So that's actually what I'm going to do here. So negative three divided by six. If I check on my calculator, it will say negative one half. I'm not going to put the one here yet because I know in a minute this is going to I'm going to have other terms up here. So when I divide, I subtract exponents. Two take away one is one. So I could put the power of one, but I don't have to. Four take away three is y to the power of one. So once again, y, I don't need to put the power of one. And the z, there's actually no other term to put in here. So I'm just going to leave that here as it's just the only term that has the z in it. So by simplifying first, you actually have less terms now to do the power to the power on. Originally, I'd have had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven terms. And now I only have one, two, three, four. So I made my life a little bit easier here. So I'm going to do, actually, I am going to put that one half back here because as I type this in, I want to do negative one half squared. I want to do x squared. I want to do y squared. So I'm just doing each term to the power of negative two, uh, power of two here. Z to the power of negative two squared. And then I can work out each of these ones. Now, you might not have noticed as I was doing this, for each question, I deliberately put all these in parentheses. And it's really important for this question specifically. If on Desmos, you just type in negative one half squared, it will say negative one quarter. And if you looked at your multiple choice answers, you would probably go, oh, look, this one's got the negative, so it must be this answer here. But it's not really that. It's negative one half in parentheses squared, which is actually positive one quarter, which actually means it's not that answer at all. So it's really important that we do use uh, parentheses for each of the terms, because there will be some questions where we might get a wrong answer, and you might not be able to spot which one of those it is. So if you always put it in parentheses, it will help you get the correct answer. Okay, so uh, negative one half times by one half is one quarter. Whoops, why will it not let me draw now? Uh, let me try one more time. Ah, there we go. So this is actually positive one quarter. Uh, X squared, actually, let me put the line that way. That'll be better. X squared is just X squared. And Y squared is just Y squared. And I can probably pick out the answer already here. This one doesn't even have an x squared in it. Uh, this one doesn't have a y squared in it. So I'm pretty sure it's this answer at the bottom here. Uh, negative 2 times 2, using my power to the power, is negative 4. But anything with a negative exponent, you can switch the position and you can move it to the bottom. And therefore, we can see that that is the correct answer. Clear all my drawings. Let me go down to question 4. And let me open up my drawings again. All right, so this one, same thing. As it's a big fraction, all to the power of negative two, I could simplify this first. So there's only one number here, it's just four. So we'll start with that. Uh, three take away negative three is six. Use Desmos for when you're doing subtractions with negative numbers. A lot of people get careless and just do three take away three. It's three take away negative three. B to the negative two and one. So negative two take away one is negative three. And this one just has a C on the bottom. So I'm just gonna leave a C on the bottom for this question. And it's all to the power of negative two. So first one to do then is four to the power of negative two. So now I am using my power to a power rule. Now I've simplified. And sometimes it's worth just checking what this is straight away before you even look at the other terms. So it'll give you a decimal. 
And we should know that that's because the negative exponent gives us fractions. So if you check the fractions at decimal point, it will say one over 16. And that's good because I can get rid of a couple of answers here straight away. So I already know it's between these two answers here. Um, a to the six to the power of negative two. Um, B to the negative three to the power of negative two. And still on the bottom of this fraction, I have C to the power of negative two as well. So there's not much I can do with that right now. So six times negative two is negative 12. So I can put A to the negative 12 here, but I know that I'm immediately going to move it to the bottom because of that negative exponent. At negative three times negative two is positive six. So I can just put E to the power of six here. So it looks certainly looks like it's this quite, oh, actually they both have a B to the six in there. All right, I guess I'm gonna keep going. And, oh, this is the one that has A to the 12 on the bottom. So I think it's this one here, but we'll just check. And C to the negative two, so negative exponent. So switch the position if it's on the bottom, move it to the top and you can make it positive. So yes, it indeed was that answer there. Let's move on to question five. And let me switch on my annotate. Here we go. So this one has, all right, so I got to do this one first because this has the exponent here. So I got to do two cubed and I'm just going to speed things up a little bit and actually just start writing down the full answers. You can certainly break it down into small pieces if you need to. And y cubed is also obviously just y cubed. Now I have to times it by three x squared, y to the four. And I have to divide it by that term that you can see here, 12, x to the fifth, y to the seventh. So with questions with fractions, remember what we're gonna do is we're gonna simplify the top, we're gonna to simplify the bottom, and then we're just gonna divide. So I got eight times three, which is 24. X to the three times X to the two. When we times, we add exponents, so that'll be X to the five. And three add four is seven. Oops, I didn't think he was gonna let me draw then for a minute. And the bottom, there's nothing we can do down there. So I'm just gonna leave that just like that. So 24 divided by 12 is two. You can subtract exponents here. Five take away five will give you zero and anything to the power of zero is one. Or just from middle school, remember if you have the same terms on top and bottom for a fraction, you can just go ahead and cancel those straight out. So you could just actually write the answer for this one straight away. And the answer is two. Let me clear all my drawings. And I think there's one more question. Oops. I think there's one more question down here. There we go, we got one final question. So let's take a look at that. Let me clear that horrible line in I had here. All right, so this one is squared. So I'm actually gonna do this one at the same time as well. So four squared, I'm just gonna write straight down is 16. Use Desmos if not sure. A to the power of three to the power of two, multiply those. C to the power of zero, anything to the power of zero is one. So that kind of just disappears. So we can get rid of that one straight away. You can put one squared as one if you like, but 16 times one is 16 anyway, so it's just gonna disappear. Negative eight squared, really important on Desmos that you put that one in parentheses. If you don't put that one in parentheses, then you could get the wrong answer. Uh, a squared. B cubed squared, so three times two is six. And four times two is eight. And on the bottom here, I got my 16 a squared b cubed. Now, if I was personally doing this one, I can see that 16 is cancelled, but I'll do it the proper way. You could work out 16 times 64 and then write down your answer here and then divide it by 16. And what you will see is you will see that it's 64. So I'm going to put that one straight away. I'm going to get rid of those two answers. Now, let's look at the a's. I got a to the 6 and a to the 2, which is a to the 8. So I'm going to write that one down. And here I don't have, whoops, somehow I missed one of the terms here. I missed a b squared off here. Whoops. Got a little bit careless there. You've got to make sure you get every single term. I missed this b squared for some reason. So b's 2 add 6 will give me 8 as well. Adding because I'm exp adding exponents because I'm multiplying. That's the rule. And there's only one term with c, and it's c to the power of 8. 
divided by, now remember I already took care of this 16, I did 16 times 64 divided by 16, so that part of the question's already been sorted out. Divided by a squared and b cubed. So what's my final answer then? Well, eight take away two gives me six. When I divide, I subtract the exponents. Eight take away three would actually give me five. And I think we noticed this yesterday. There is a mistake on this very last question here. And c to the eight is c to the eight. So I think that answer there is supposed to be b to the power of five, um, but there's just a slight mistake in the pretest anyway. Okay, that should do it for this one. And you should be ready to now take the 9A.3 test.